these ominous rumbling sounds? The ground shaking under your feet? Wait a minute, that's my tummy. Or it might be Washington State's Mount Adams waking up. It's the largest volcano in the state by both area and volume, and it's recently started to show signs of life after staying silent for thousands of years. Scientists have noticed an alarming uptick in seismic activity around the mountain. And since the last eruption here happened between 3,800 and 7,600 years ago, humanity was still in the Stone Age at that time. This sudden chattiness has scientists, let's say, curious. The U.S. Geological Survey has hurriedly installed temporary seismic stations around Mount Adams to keep an eye on the situation. At the same time, they reassure the public there's no need to panic. Mount Adams doesn't reach the height of the better-known Mount Rainier. And still, it covers a massive area, making it Washington's largest active volcano. Interestingly, records show that before September of this year, Mount Adams had experienced an average of just one small earthquake every two to three years since 1982. And then, the Cascades Volcano Observatory and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network detected a staggering six earthquakes in just one month, September. These quakes were all rather tiny, with magnitudes ranging between 0.9 and 2 on the Richter scale. It means they were so weak you wouldn't feel them at the surface. Plus, satellite imagery confirmed there was no ground deformation in the area. Now at the moment, the USGS keeps Mount Adams' alert level at green or normal, so we shouldn't worry about the ground opening and swallowing towns and cities. But the most recent seismic blips have encouraged the agency to install additional equipment for more precise monitoring. Such an expanded network will help scientists notice even the smallest earthquakes, which will help them understand what's happening under Mount Adams. This extra equipment might also shed light on whether this recent activity is a signal of future eruptions or just a random anomaly. If Mount Adams eventually erupted, it would likely produce slow-moving lava flows rather than explosive eruptions like Mount St. Helens. After all, past eruptions have only led to lava flows that travel just a few miles from the volcano. So that's not what we'd need to worry about. A much more dangerous thing would be lahars. These are mud flows that can happen when volcanic ash, rock, and melted ice mix during eruptions. Lahars have occurred near Mount Adams without even eruptions. Rock, weakened by hydrothermal processes at the volcano's summit, suddenly broke loose, creating fast-moving, destructive mud flows. Exactly for this reason, the USGS categorizes Mount Adams as a high-threat volcano. While it doesn't erupt frequently, it still poses serious risks to nearby settlements. Another volcano we should carefully watch is Katla in Iceland. It's one of the country's most powerful and dangerous volcanoes. It last erupted over a century ago, in 1918. But if it erupts again, it could be 10 times as powerful as another Icelandic volcano whose name I can't pronounce. See? That one erupted in 2010, completely disrupting air travel all over Europe. An eruption of Katla could release large amounts of sulfur dioxide, which could form sulfate aerosols in the atmosphere. Such aerosols reflect sunlight, which could even cause temporary global cooling. This phenomenon often followed catastrophic volcanic eruptions in the past. Although eruptions are common in Iceland, Katla's ash cloud would likely shoot higher into the sky and cover larger areas of Europe than that other one did. It would ground flights and negatively affect economies. If Katla erupted, it would also harm agriculture, water supplies, and air quality. In 2014, scientists noted that a large eruption could even cause a tsunami that might travel along Iceland's south coast and out to sea. But the potential impact of such a tsunami is still unclear. Katla tends to erupt on a regular schedule every 40 to 80 years, which means that another eruption is statistically very likely soon. That's why Katla remains under close scientific observation. The Canary Islands' Cumbra Vieja erupted recently in 2021, reminding people of its destructive potential. The lava flow from this eruption was devastating. It covered whole neighborhoods and flowed into the ocean, destroying more than 3,000 homes. Thousands of people had to be evacuated. But the craziest thing? Even though the damage was significant, 
Scientists believe it could have been far worse. A massive eruption of Cumbra Vieja could have caused the volcano's entire western flank to collapse into the Atlantic Ocean, triggering a mega-tsunami. This hypothetical tsunami could have potentially created waves hundreds or even thousands of feet high. They could have flooded coastlines around the Atlantic Basin, including parts of the US and Europe. Luckily, recent studies claim that a collapse of that scale is unlikely. But even though the chance of a mega-tsunami is low, scientists still think it's wise to prepare for possible eruptions because there's a chance of extensive damage. The lava flows that occur at this volcano tend to be extensive and dangerous to both human life and the infrastructure on the island. If you decide to travel to Ecuador, you should be wary of Cotopaxi, one of the most active volcanoes in this country. It's been rumbling with minor eruptions since 2022. While these eruptions have been relatively small, Cotopaxi's has a great potential for a major eruption. And it has scientists on high alert. If Cotopaxi erupted on a large scale, it could produce a massive ash cloud over 12 miles high, threatening the lives of around 200,000 people in the neighboring area. A serious danger is Cotopaxi's snow-capped summit. It would melt super rapidly in a major eruption. It could lead to destructive floods and landslides that would flow down the mountain and potentially reach populated areas. This combination of volcanic activity and glacial floods makes Cotopaxi a high-risk volcano. A powerful eruption could occur soon, or it could be years or even decades away. But monitoring efforts are in place to catch any warning signs. The next volcano we should watch out for is already infamous, Mount Vesuvius. Its catastrophic eruption in 79 CE destroyed the Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Its last eruption occurred in 1944, but Vesuvius remains highly active and poses a great risk to nearby Naples, one of Italy's largest cities. A large eruption would threaten over 3 million people. Many of them live in the vicinity or even directly on the slopes of the volcano. If Vesuvius erupted, it would be an explosive event, with ash, rocks, and volcanic gas ejected at extremely high speeds. And even though such a destructive event isn't expected for a few hundred years, Vesuvius remains one of the world's most closely watched volcanoes. After all, it has a real potential to cause catastrophic damage in a densely populated area. Then, we have Popocatépetl, often called El Popo. It's one of North America's tallest active volcanoes, which lies about 40 miles from Mexico City. Exactly this proximity to a metropolitan area with a population of 22 million people makes Popocatépetl especially hazardous. A large eruption could send a massive ash cloud over Mexico City, causing widespread disruptions. Ash could clog the city's drainage systems, contaminate water supplies, and even cause power outages by short-circuiting electrical systems. Plus, lahars could rush down the volcano, reaching nearby towns. Popocatépetl has been showing near-constant seismic activity since the early 2000s, and smaller eruptions are pretty common here. In early 2024, there were 13 recorded minor eruptions, which alarmed nearby towns. At the same time, Volcanologists consider such eruptions normal for Popocatépetl. While talking about super dangerous volcanoes, we can't skip Yellowstone National Park. It houses one of the world's largest supervolcanoes. Its last massive eruption occurred about 640,000 years ago. But if this monster were to erupt today, the impact would be much more devastating for the entire planet. States closest to Yellowstone, including Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, would be most affected, likely experiencing disastrous pyroclastic flows. These flows, which are made of a dangerous mix of lava, ash, and gases, can obliterate everything in their path. Large parts of the country would also be blanketed in volcanic ash, over three feet in some areas. On a global scale, an eruption at Yellowstone would send tons of ash and gases into the stratosphere potentially blocking sunlight and causing global temperatures to drop for a few years. This would disrupt agriculture, collapse transportation systems, and create food shortages on a massive scale. 
Still, even though there's a popular myth that Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption, geologists clarify that this isn't true. Volcanoes don't follow precise timetables, and the activity at Yellowstone doesn't indicate an imminent eruption. So yeah, that's good news. Wow! Earth's surface is shaking! Long cracks split the ground open. Lava rivers are rapidly flowing down the slopes. Deafening noise is filling the air. Rocks and other debris are flying high up. Clouds of volcanic gas and ash cover the sky. Now this is not a plot of a blockbuster disaster movie. It's what happens when super volcanoes decide to erupt. But this is likely not the scenario that will take place when the world's largest volcano, Mauna Loa, decides to finish its long, long nap. In 2021, scientists were sure it would happen soon. But so far, nothing. The volcano's seismicity keeps increasing and then going back to normal. But you never know when this giant will finally come back to life. That's why experts have been monitoring geological activity on Hawaii's largest island for quite some time. The Big Island of Hawaii is made up of five volcanoes, including the most active on the planet, Kilauea, and the largest, Mauna Loa. This gigantic thing makes up almost half the landmass of the island. And what lava Kilauea emits in one day, Mauna Loa could spew out within 20 minutes. That's what it did in 1984. While Mauna Loa's smaller sibling has been throwing tantrums for a while, the giant has been slumbering ever since its last eruption. But very recently, the Hawaii Volcano Observatory has recorded more than 200 mini earthquakes below Mauna Loa. It likely means an increased flow of magma down there. Good morning! The volcano might be waking up, or not. If Mauna Loa did suddenly erupt, lava flows could reach the ocean and the most populated and touristy places, like Captain Cook, very, very quickly, in a matter of hours. In 1984, the last time the volcano erupted, lava got as far as the outskirts of Hilo on the other side of the island. That's where a campus of the University of Hawaii is found. Luckily, people had a few weeks' warning to get ready for the disaster. These days, locals have special go-bags ready with the most important stuff, including documents and money. Such precautions can come in handy in case of an emergency evacuation. Even though most Mauna Loa eruptions have so far only affected the summit area, several of them sent lava all the way down to the ocean. And you never know how powerful the next eruption will be. Now, what is the highest mountain on Earth? Mount Everest, you say? Well, it depends. From seafloor to the summit, Mauna Loa is a thousand feet taller than the famous Himalayan peak. The volcano is so big, it makes the Pacific plate it's sitting on literally slump under its weight. Scientists say that when this monster of a volcano erupts, the volume of lava coming out per unit will be life-threatening. Over its recorded history, Mauna Loa has been erupting regularly, almost every six years. And even though the last eruption of the volcano occurred about 40 years ago, scientists are certain it'll happen again. Now, remember the scene I showed you at the beginning? Well, you can relax. It's not likely to happen with Mauna Loa. The thing is, big island volcanoes, including Mauna Loa, aren't very volatile. That's because they're shield volcanoes. These volcanoes got such a name because they aren't really very high and resemble a warrior's shield placed flat on the ground. Shield volcanoes get formed by very fluid lava. It travels farther and forms much thinner flows than lava erupted from a stratovolcano, which is conically shaped and tall, like the infamous Krakatoa in Indonesia. So if, or should I say when, Mauna Loa erupts, there probably won't be ash clouds and tons of debris. The most dangerous thing will be lava. Since Mauna Loa is a shield volcano, its lava is extremely fluid and voluminous, which allows it to flow far and fast. Using theoretical vent maps, experts from the Hawaii Volcano Observatory have made charts of possible lava flows. They're kind of worried about earthquakes clustering at high rates. It likely means that lava is on the move under the surface. 500 to 600 earthquakes per day are a serious reason to be on high alert. On the other hand, it doesn't necessarily mean a disaster or inevitable eruption. 
Around a decade ago, several earthquakes that happened at the same time signaled that something was happening under Mauna Loa. But an eruption didn't occur. Instead, half the volcano shifted a bit to the south. This way, it probably gave more room to magma so that it had enough space to stay beneath the surface. Now, let's get back to the catastrophic eruption we saw at the beginning of the video. That's what often happens when a supervolcano erupts. Those are volcanoes that have at least once had an eruption with a volcanic explosivity index of 8, which is the largest recorded number on the index. Supervolcanoes are often extremely large, with no cone at all. That's because they're typically the remains of gigantic magma chambers that once flared up, leaving behind a caldera. They're usually found over hot spots. Supervolcanoes can produce super eruptions, and when they do, they blow more than 240 cubic miles of ash, molten rock, and hot gases up into the air. In other words, four super eruptions could fill the Grand Canyon to the brim. Supervolcanoes get formed when gigantic volumes of scorching hot magma are trying to escape from deep underground. This magma rises close to the surface but can't break through Earth's crust. That's why a huge pressurized pool of bubbling magma gathers at a depth of only several miles. The pressure keeps growing because more magma is trying to get to the surface until, bam, a super eruption occurs. The most recent super eruption happened in New Zealand. Well, when I say recent, I mean around 26,500 years ago. Nah, I wasn't around then. That's when a supervolcano beneath the surface of Lake Taubo spewed into the air more than 300 cubic miles of ash and pumice. Imagine 500,000 great pyramids of Giza flying up at the same time. That's how incredibly powerful that eruption was. But the most exciting and confusing thing about the eruption was that the Taubo volcano simply didn't go off like many others. At first, everything was going as usual. More than 200 square miles of magma had built up under the surface, and the pressure was getting higher and higher. But after the rock cracked and the first part of lava rushed out of the crater, something went wrong, and the supervolcano took a break. Only several months later, the disastrous eruption shook the ground, and thousands of tons of lava, rocks, and ash flew high into the atmosphere. But the age of supervolcanoes isn't over. The most infamous of them all is probably the one in Yellowstone National Park. This giant handles at least three mega-powerful eruptions. And who knows how many smaller ones? If this monster erupted anywhere as strongly as it did 2.1 million years ago, it would spit out more than 588 cubic miles of red-hot material. You can probably picture it more vividly if I tell you that this volume is comparable to 65 million capital rotundas in Washington, D.C. piled together. Wow. Anyway, scientists are sure that Yellowstone doesn't present any danger these days. For an eruption to happen, magma inside must be at least 50% molten. With the Yellowstone caldera, this number is just 5 to 15%. But of course, Yellowstone isn't the only supervolcano on our planet. There's also New Zealand's Tabo you already know about, Japan's Arikaldra, California's Long Valley, Indonesia's Toba, any of them can one day produce a super eruption. There are also several so-called supervolcanoes that haven't lived up to this name yet because they've never produced anything like a super eruption. For example, in 1883, Indonesian volcano Krakatoa went off. The power of the eruption tore the volcano's walls open, and cold seawater rushed into its molten insides. The difference in temperature made the volcano blow up with a deafening boom. It was clearly heard 2,000 miles away in Australia. It earned the blast the title of the loudest sound in history. But even though the consequences of this event were truly catastrophic, it still turned out not powerful enough to be called a super eruption. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.